Thank you very much, and thanks to the organisers for inviting me here to talk. Um, as you can tell, I'm sure from my accent that I come from Birmingham, so I hope it's not too strong an accent for you. Uh, and this is where we're based. Some of you may know the hospital. It's the Birmingham Midland Eye Centre, and I can keep a check on all the patients walking in the door because uh, my office is right over the front of the hospital. And some of you know that, uh, like most uveitis uh, experts with our clinics, they're very, very, very busy. And my Monday afternoon clinic goes on well into the evening. I know others here, clinics go on late at night. But we like to relax at Birmingham. It's slightly less stress than being in London. So this is us last Monday after the clinic. <laughs> I'm going to talk about uh, the vision of the National Birdshot Research Network, then the purpose of it, the composition, who's involved in it. Very briefly on research studies, because you've got that after lunch. And then they're talking about this thing, a biobank. Well, what's a biobank? A, bi a bank, we know, is somewhere that stores or holds money. But this biobank is far more precious than that because it's going to store bits of you and your data. And I'll come on to that in a minute. Why do we need one? And that's, we've already heard about collaborative research, what it is, and how does it work? Because there's a lot of administration involved in setting up this biobank. And that's why when we'll come on a little bit later on to the funding side of things. So the, the research network, there's a vision, if you like, a mission statement, is to deliver better care, but it's through you, through patient-led improvement, in the service, but not just how the clinics run, it's uh, but in, through research. So the purpose is there to support all aspects of research into birdshot, some of you have already heard about when Graham talked about all these, these molecules that are involved in the immune system, but also we'll hear a little bit more about studies like quality of life, studies that you've already been involved in today, just filling in a form. Uh, but we also need to collate all that, and that's why we need a biobank. And that's one of the main purpose of the, the network. So who's involved in this network? Well, it's throughout the UK. It's all of you, all the patients. Us as ophthalmologists have an interest in birdshot or interest in uveitis, at least one per region. Basic scientists like Graham, nurses, research nurses. Some of you here have been involved in clinical trials, those nurses. Many of you here are on the immunosuppressants that Miles talked about. Many of you are being monitored by immunosuppression nurses. And various others, interested parties, managers, administrators, etc. So what research we're going to talk about? Well, this is a very basic thing that we could do, but I think we need to go into talk about things a little bit more detail than that. So what studies, and you hear about these later, I think with uh, Alistair Dennison's going to talk about some of them. We need to know what I mean by birdshot is the same as somebody else means by birdshot. Is it all the same thing? We've heard Miles saying there are different levels. Some people have no, need no treatment. Other people need very, very uh, strong treatments. Quality of life, how is that affecting you? And looking at various investigations that we've already heard Nigel talk about, visual fields, electrodiagnostic tests, OCTs. And then the stuff that most of us here are interested in as ophthalmologists, but also the basic scientists looking at this HLAA29 marker and various white blood cells involved in the immune system, T cells. So moving on to a biobank, I said it's a very storing all your precious specimens, and it's there will give us a chance to get more extensive studies into birdshot, rather than people all around the country doing tiny little studies. Now we'll be able to have a resource for them to do their studies, and they can come to a biobank where all your material and data, clinical data, is stored to do that research. So we've then got a big database, not only of the phenotypic, in other words, your clinical findings, your electrodiagnostic tests, your visual acuity, what it looks like in the back of the eye, as well as all these genetic informations. We can look at HLA-29. Graham showed you various numbers of different markers that we can look at as well. And we need to do that because we're dealing with a rare disease. So we need as many people as possible to our, so we can do our research on. And we hope that will then contribute to all the future research in birdshot. So people will be donating their genes, but they'll be donating a little bit more than that because it involves patient clinical data as well. So a biobank is this collection of human biomaterials. 
And to do that, it has a very broad consent. So we need your consent. It has to have ethical approval for us to take all these specimens. But it doesn't have to be incredibly specific. It doesn't mean I want to take this, your blood to do a specific project. It just means I want to do your blood. It will be stored and other people then can use that blood or that data for their own projects. But it has to be stored under conditions through the Human Tissue Authority and the Human Tissue Act. And you may remember that this came about many years ago from the scandal in Liverpool at the Alder Hay Children's Hospital for the storage and using of children's organs without the parents' permission. So we have very, very strong regulations regarding storage of tissues in any establishment. And we can give out from the biobank any researcher who applies to use it, but it requires a license and is regulated through the Human Tissue Authority. I said it's a watchdog that supports public confidence, after, particularly after the Alder Hay. There were other scandals in Bristol as well. And they give approval for organ and bone marrow donations from living people as well. So it's a very, very strong, important body. So when I go around and I want to do a project and I want to collect some, perhaps some blood from my birdshot patients, I have to apply for ethical approval. And this is an online integrated research application system, IRAS. It's an online form which has numerous pages, has to go through various uh, R&D departments of trusts, and can take many, many months to get a study undertaken. But it's an extremely rigorous process, but this does not require that license because it's an individual research project that I'm doing on my own patients. But if somebody else says to me, Andrew perhaps in Bristol says, oh, you're, you're doing a project, you've got all these bur bur blood from patients with birdshot, can I have some please? No, I can't do that. Because that's, he's from another site, he hasn't got permission. And he may want to do it looking for a different project, looking for a different molecule that I'm looking at. So in other words, it's very, I get the research, I get the ethics, but it's really mainly for me to do. Whereas for you giving consent for your specimens to go into a biobank, it's very generic. It's valid, it's informed. You need to be told what the studies, the samples may be used for. What will happen to the samples? Where will they go? Will it be stored? Access to health records, because we need to know the clinical data. It's not good enough to know that somebody's got something in their genes. We don't know if that person perhaps had more severe disease than the next person. How any personal information is going to be handled? How are we going to get feedback? You've given us the samples. We need to give something back to you. Can't just take it and give nothing back. So we need to tell you feedback of the findings. And what happens if you say, look, I don't really want to give any blood, that's fine, but we need to, do, to inform you of this. And here is the initial draft uh, ethics form, uh, the consent form that, uh, for the patients that Narciss has done. So we get the samples in under this generic broad consent, not for a specific project, and then people apply to the biobank to do their individual research. So we don't need specific project to, do the, to use your specimens, to, to get the specimens from you. We don't have to say it's for this project. It's an overall generic consent. Now, what we're going to take, well, additional samples for research, which is usually probably going to be blood. We want, said we need the clinical data. We must match that up. Just taking your blood samples, et cetera, is not, not good enough. And we need to know how things are progressing over time. We also need perhaps tissue surp surplus to diagnosis if you're undergoing a procedure of some kind or any waste tissues at surgery. And that will come on, I think, with ethics with time as Narciss is doing so much work on this, we build this up. So we can use it in genetic studies and research outside the area. So if I want to use it in Birmingham but the, blood, but the biobank is in London, that's fine. Not a problem. Who are we going to take it from? Well, from you, the patients only, no children, no family members, complete confidentiality and anonymity. So what are we going to take? Uh, I said blood, we're going to do DNA. Uh, we'll probably take uh, blood cells, these T cells, look at these white blood cells, and come on to something which is rather emotive, which is the third bullet point. And I'd just like to point out that, that Nick Bucknell has a uh, questionnaire or 
that he'd like you to fill in regarding eye donation. I know it is a very emotive thing to talk about now, but it's also a very important thing. So please have a look and fill this in if you can for us. And then tissue surplus to requirements. For an example, if you need a cataract operation at some time, we make an incision into the eye. The fluid in the front chamber of the eye, the aqueous humor, just drips out. Well, we could collect that at the time and use that. And then bank all of this in one place. So we, we have a variety of specialists who could be using all these uh, resources that you will give into a central location, and then we can go and use it. So that's the, the blood or the DNA and the bits of you we need to take, but we need to know various demographics, age, gender, ethnicity, education, occupation, etc. cetera, what we'd expect. And then the clinical data said how much you're seeing, your, your vision, your distance vision, near. We've already heard about contrast sensitivity chart, uh, color vision, examination, photographs, perhaps OCT findings, quality of life. And then where possible, the visual fields, electrodiagnostics, because some of you may not be routinely having these in your centers, and possibly angiography as well, the two types that you heard about earlier on. So I don't think we're going to be doing tests for the sake of doing tests, but these are going to be important projects that we need specimens and data from you to do this. And that's the whole point then of setting up this National Birdshot Biobank. So I'm sitting in Birmingham, and I want to use your resources. Well, how do I go about doing that? You've filled in this generic consent form, which tells us, which allows us to take the specimens from you and all the data. And I have to fill in a form again. Narcissus has worked very hard on this. The moment it's a three-page form. What project's going to be? The research question. What do I need? Clinical data, laboratory data? How am I going to use the, this uh, data, the results, when I've, when I've got some results? But I also need ethics approval for my project. I still have to get approval for the project that I want to do, but I can use then the material from the biobank. And all this is going to take a lot of time, a lot of manpower, and a lot of money. There's a steering group. We need a director, manager, appropriate committees. I believe the biobank's going to be based at the Royal Free, but the clinical data set will be held at Moorfields with links to the Institute of Ophthalmology. We need agreements with other centers who are going to use the material, with the researchers who are going to use those samples from the biobank. Then we've got quality management, which is vital. Remember, this is regulated by the Human Tissue Authority. Patient recruitment, informed consent. We've got to trace all the samples, make sure we know where they are. What about storing the samples that's done correctly, disposing of samples? And then the requests that we need to come in from other centers to allocate the samples for release to other research projects. Retrieval, packaging, distribution. Something happens, we have to have a way of reporting this if there's an adverse event all the administration involved, the quality management systems involved, which in a way, slightly taken for granted when we just want to say to you, can we just have your blood? But this is going behind the scenes and to make the best use of it, we've got to have this infrastructure in place. So we will be looking at various markers, not pencils or ordinary markers, but genetic markers as one of the, the tests for the biobank. And I thought I would just run through again to try and summarize what I've been talking about. So, for example, I wish to do a genetic study using DNA on my birdshot patients. I obtain this IRAS approval, which may take me three to six months. And I recruit <coughs> about maybe 15 patients in Birmingham. My results are meaningless, as there are so few patients. I then ask colleagues around the country, the ones that are here, Moorfields and Thomases, Bristol, etc., in other centers for the DNA of their patients. But they can't do that because they need to get ethical approval from their site, site approval for them to give me their patients. But their patients may be coming in once every few weeks to their clinics. So then I've got to wait another few months till I've got enough specimens. And then I've got to ask them to give me all the clinical details of the patients as well. They've got to go through all the notes and write everything down <clears throat> and then email them to me or whatever is appropriate. And then eventually I can do my study because I've got enough samples and it may be meaningful. And I'm then 15 months, 18 months, two years down the line. So when there's a biobank now, I want to do my study. 
I get my ethical approval again, and then I apply with this three-page form to the biobank to use perhaps 150 of your samples. I get the full clinical data set with it as well, and now I've got meaningful results in a short period of time. But again, everything here, well, is really dependent on you. But one other thing to set it up, and it's absolutely vital, this. And the next talk is going to talk about money. So please, I want you to do, if this thing comes up, is loads of money. Well, that's what we need to raise. Thank you for your attention.